This video is about Southron ambitions, tying into Rickard Stark's video. Unfortunately, with the videos I'm trying to get done before Season 6, this video isn't as in-depth as I would like. Most book readers have at least heard of Southron ambitions. The theory that Rickard Stark, with perhaps some nudging from his maester, had interest in building alliances in the South to gain power. For most book readers, we made it through quite a few books in the A Song of Ice and Fire series without thinking too much about the arrangements Rickard Stark made for his children. The characters in the books accepted it, and so we simply accepted it too. Then, in A Dance with Dragons, we get a hint that those arrangements weren't as normal as we thought. Lady Dustin informs Theon Greyjoy that Rickard Stark had Southron ambitions. And then we begin to wonder, was there more to Rickard's arrangements for his children? Or is this just the words of a bitter woman, angry that she couldn't be part of the Stark family? A crazy that even has conspiracy theories about maesters, stating Rickard's maester helped push Rickard's ambitions. Surely we can discount her words for what it is, a sad, bitter woman making up stories, trying to find reasons she didn't get the things she wanted. But then we look closely at the evidence and begin to wonder, what if she's right? What if there was more to Rickard's plans? We jump back to the War of the Nine Penny Kings, or the Fifth Blackfire Rebellion, which broke out in 260 AC, two years before Ares II Targaryen came to the throne. For this war, the regional warden titles were activated, and we know that several young lords and knights distinguished themselves, including Tywin Lannister, Stefan Baratheon, Brendan Tully, Ares II Targaryen, and Barristan Selmy. But there were other lords there as well. John Arryn, likely Rickard Stark, Hoster Tully. During this war, the lords of these regions had the opportunity to know each other better than they would normally. It is likely Rickard Stark, John Arryn, Hoster Tully, Tywin Lannister, and maybe Stefan Baratheon all became war buddies in a sense. And this friendship may have turned into an alliance as time went on, an alliance they planned to strengthen by intermarriage and fostering. This is backed up by the arrangements we see after the war. Hoster Tully wanted to marry his daughters to the heir of Winterfell and the heir of Casterly Rock. Ned Stark and Robert Baratheon were sent to the Eyrie to be fostered by John Arryn, and Robert Baratheon was betrothed to Lyanna Stark. We also read that John Arryn's heir, Elbert Arryn, was most likely a good friend of Brandon Stark, making us wonder if the Eyrie also sent him to Winterfell to be fostered for some time, or that he simply spent some time there. These arrangements are unique when we look at the history of the Great Houses, and we see that for hundreds of years, in most cases, they typically married their own bannermen, not other Great Houses. This makes sense. Marrying within your territory makes sure that your own territory is stable and helps seal alliances. Lords want to retain or gain influence with their own vassals, and intermarrying is the way to do this. This is very important for a region such as the North that is remote and larger than the rest of the regions. And from the family tree of the Starks, we see a tendency to marry their bannermen. The times they did not, the family they married into had strong first men blood, which goes into a different theory about the Starks. So despite this evidence for a high level of marrying one's own bannermen, Rickard Stark does the opposite of what many Starks before him did. He makes plans to marry his heir to a daughter of House Tully, and his daughter to the heir of Storm's End, while sending one son to foster at the Eyrie. Rickard turned his eyes to the south, while much of his line before him had their eyes turned to the north. Anytime a Lord of Winterfell ventured from the north, they were quick to return, even if that meant giving up immense power. So why, all of a sudden, was Rickard making these alliances and turning to the south instead of the north? The Riverlands and the Vale are direct neighbors of the north, but that still doesn't make sense. They aren't at war. There is no peace to be made through marriage or fostering. And why waste your children, which as cruel as it sounds are great chips to use to secure your area, on other regions when you can foster and marry them to your own bannermen, further cementing loyalty? There's a few thoughts. Well, probably more than a few. The Song of Ice and Fire community is full of conspiracy theories, and I love it. The major theory is that when the Lords came together during the Fifth Blackfire Rebellion, they had grievances that they shared as they cemented their friendships. There was likely discontent that started with Aegon V, the unlikely. 
Aegon V was not very loved by the lords. He was constantly making reforms that took away the rights and powers of lords, to better protect the small folk. Though Aegon V was dead by this war, and his son was now on the throne, the lords could still be smarting from what Aegon V did. What if this new king, or a king after him, got it in his head to take away more of their rights? They weren't going to have that again. By forming a political alliance that could hold more weight and power, maybe at first they wanted to ensure that another king couldn't come and take away more of their rights and privileges. So the scheming started to build up a political power or presence that could oppose the king should he do something they don't agree with. Then Ares II came to the throne, and if this theory is correct, they probably were happy they started building friendships as Ares II's mental health went down the tube. Rickard Stark visited King's Landing in 264 AC, and while Ares II wasn't full-blown crazy at this time, that wouldn't happen until the defiance of Duskendale in 277 AC, he was still displaying some worrying behavior even back then. And likely Rickard saw this. So that was further evidence that, yeah, they needed to keep planning and bringing the Great Houses together. Dorne, the Reach, and the Iron Islands are excluded, but this could be from a combination of mistrust and these regions maybe not having significant children around the age that they needed. It even appears they wanted Tywin Lannister part of this alliance, as there were talks of Lysa Tully marrying Jaime Lannister. But Ares II destroyed those plans when he made Jaime Lannister a member of his Kingsguard. Everything is going fine, then Ares II's crazy went from bad to worse. Seeing this, they most likely decided they needed Ares II off the throne. It wasn't going to be good enough just to have a political presence to influence the king into doing what they want and protecting their rights. Ares II couldn't be reasoned with. With these alliances, they potentially would have enough political power to make Ares II abdicate the throne for someone else. Many people guessed that person was Rhaegar, someone a little more rational that they could still pressure to their demands. Many believe they weren't trying to overthrow the Targaryens, but have enough political pressure to put someone much better suited on the throne, or have enough weight to counter any crazy rules a Targaryen king could make in the future. But there's another side that believes the uniting of the Great Houses wasn't to put another Targaryen on the throne, but to get rid of the Targaryens altogether. There's a further theory that states the Maesters were also helping in this, hating the Targaryens, magic, dragons, and incest, but that is just too much to go into this video. So who would they put on the throne if they removed the Targaryens? Maybe the young heir of Storm's End, Robert Baratheon, who does have Targaryen blood in him and technically was in line for the throne, if a few Targaryens were to be bumped off first. Rickard marries his daughter to the one-day king of the Iron Throne, and Jon Arryn and Rickard Stark have a young, easy-to-manipulate boy on the throne. Of course, there could be a simpler reason. Maybe these men formed into a political group or faction to counterweight Tywin Lannister, who could have been seen as having too much power. But anyone could see Tywin's power was waning as time went on, and then why did the group appear to attempt to bring Tywin Lannister into the alliance? As interesting and really darn sneaky as a total removal of the Targaryens from the throne would be, it might be more reasonable to assume Rhaegar was part of their plans and Rhaegar knew about the alliances. A lot of people have a hard time seeing Rickard Stark as wanting to destroy an entire dynasty. They instead see him as a man just wanting to make sure the kingdom they were in was fair to the lords. But here's some proof for Rhaegar being involved in their plans. Sir Oswald Went, one of the King's Guard, and a friend of Rhaegar, convinced his brother to hold a tournament. Not any tourney, but ones with rewards much greater than the Grand Tourney Lord Tywin had thrown at Lannisport to honor Prince Viserys' birth, which was a lavish tourney in itself. This, as they knew it would, drew many people from all over the realm, including major houses. It is believed that Rhaegar planted the idea for this tournament because he knew about the alliances and wanted to work with them, or was already working with them and wanted to meet to plan getting rid of Ares II. This is further supported by Jaime Lannister remembering Rhaegar telling him, before leaving for the Trident during Robert's Rebellion, that once the fighting was done, he intended to call a council to make changes. So was Rhaegar making plans with them beforehand? Or did he just finally realize that while he was putzing around with prophecies and Stark girls, his father was destroying the Targaryen dynasty and finally decided to take a stand? Though Rhaegar dies on the Trident and we never learn what he meant or what he planned, 
it is likely he wanted to remove his father, Ares II, from the throne and place himself on the throne. Which, again, the other great houses could have been planning on as well. A fun question to think about, did Ares II know about all this? Ares II was paranoid, but all his paranoia may not have been unfounded. In fact, there are some that believe Ares made certain moves because he knew the lords were working against him and making these alliances. Making Jaime Lannister a Kingsguard prevented Tywin from that alliance. Maybe he knew that. He did go to the tourney of Harrenhal under suspicions of treason, and he was most likely right about that. He was also just straight crazy, though. If Rickard was making these plans with other houses, their desired outcome was never seen, at least probably not in the way they imagined. When Rhaegar took Lyanna, Ares II killed Rickard and his heir Brandon and demanded the heads of Robert Baratheon and Ned Stark. When Jon Arryn decided to protect his wards and raise his banners, it is possible that Jon Arryn was still trying to keep whatever plan he had been a part of alive. But Rhaegar died, Tywin had the rest of the Targaryens in the city murdered, and the Targaryen dynasty was shoved off the throne. Jon Arryn made do with what he had, or if you believe they always wanted Robert on the throne, he rejoiced. What were the results of all their planning? At the end of Robert's rebellion, it seemed the realm was even less knitted together than before. For the most part, the Tyrells were kept out of affairs for siding with Ares II. Doran was treated as if it was no longer part of the realm. Ned went to the north and kept to himself. The Vale was weaker than ever with Jon Arryn's heirs dead and a terrible marriage to Lysa Tully. And the Baratheons and Lannisters were tied together but that alliance was very unstable and a terrible foundation for a new dynasty. Any hopes or plans for a united realm or more rights for each region was destroyed at the end of Robert's Rebellion. And then, with Jon Arryn's death, chaos soon engulfed the realm when it became evident how fragile the foundations of this new dynasty were. Finally, my personal thoughts on this theory, which will be very brief. If this theory turns out to be true, I find it to be likely that if they were coming together as a political force, Rhaegar at one point was involved. It does seem more likely they were attempting to have a political presence, putting someone on the throne that wasn't crazy or making rules that hurt them, and making sure that in the future, their words and desires had more weight. However, I have noticed in general, I don't have a very shiny tinfoil hat, so I'm generally not that out there with what theories I support and don't support. What are your thoughts on Southern ambitions? Do you think Rickard Stark was truly planning to bring together a political faction that could displace a king or put a new one on the throne? Do you think they simply wanted to make sure they had more power to override a king's ruling if it hurt them? Do you believe the Maesters helped this alliance because they wanted to get rid of the Targaryens? Or do you think these people are absolutely off their rockers and that Rickard's marriage arrangements were simply to help the plot along and George R. R. Martin thinks he has the nuttiest fans ever, which he does and he needs to love us. Take a moment to hit the like button, it helps the video and channel out a ton. The dislike button helps too, but the like button feels better. New A Song of Ice and Fire Game of Thrones videos at least twice a week and it is Stark Month, which will likely go into April, so yay if you are a Stark fan. House Tully and House Eri, <laughs> House Eerie. What? Why did I write that? That's crazy.